This Drew Hardock fight is a 135 pound weight division bout and is brought to you by Let's Lee Consulting. And now, let's meet the fighters. So Ryan Torrance comes to us out of LaRange, Saskatchewan, not with the LA Warriors, instead the LaRange Wando Club, and he comes down to us one and two as an amateur, both losses suffered by TKO. And Ryan Torrance, uh, again, he's a very young amateur, uh, able to come in here. Uh, he's been working uh, at... Uh, when he's on his back, uh, you have an opportunity to, when you lose by TKO, you can learn from that. Uh, both, those, uh, or both those TKO losses happened when he was on his back, and so spending that time to affect that part of it. Uh, you know, he's had a year and a half uh, years uh, training in MMA, and uh, he's uh, looking forward to evening up his record at 2-10-2. Yeah, said he's been spending a lot of time working on his hands. He figures that that uh, should help him. His, his one victory did come by way of decision, and uh, I'm sure he'll be looking to get a finish tonight. Uh, like, uh, so far, 11 of our 12 fights tonight have seen a finish, uh, only one of them. And that, the last one going to the third round here, as uh, we are at the Spectra Place in Esteban, Saskatchewan. And uh, of course, uh, we will be back here on June the 1st as we come back to Esteban. So if you're uh, an Esteban fan, make sure you get your tickets to that event as uh, you want to come out and see us in Esteban and go to hardknocksfighting.com for the list of upcoming events. I know Esteban now a popular destination for the Hard Knocks Fighting Champions. So Dennis Papineau comes down out of the Blood Inc. Fight Team and Brandon Boxing Club out of Estevan, Saskatchewan, where he calls home. Of course, Estevan and Brandon, a bit of a distance there, but he travels to train and uh, comes in two and one. And if you recognize the t-shirt, that's because his coaches, uh, primarily the coaches that have been out helping out our independent fighters tonight, had some success there. And we'll see if uh, that success with the independents translates to the success with the fighter they brought with them in Dennis Papineau. Well, and uh, you look at uh, Dennis Papineau, a hometown boy, and uh, he's got uh, a huge home crowd here at uh, Spectrum Place and uh, tons of people. Uh, I think uh, we heard the 50-50 draw was uh, near three or $30,000. So it's crazy uh, people here and they're uh, huge fans of fights uh, in Esteban and always an event when the Hard Knocks Fight Championship comes uh, to small town Saskatchewan. Yeah, and uh, a lot of support out here in Esteban, which is awesome to see. And a lot of support for Dennis Papineau, uh, who is uh, getting ready to get in the cage. Two and one as an amateur and uh, setting, uh, again, is starting to see more and more amateurs with experience here in the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship. Starting to see, uh, especially with the Saskatchewan fighters and the Saskatchewan card. And uh, I know uh, it's a big, uh, some big hometown talent coming up later on the card tonight. Wade Baldwin, Wade Baldwin is fighting, Felix Jimenez is fighting, uh, Derek Daku in our main event uh, draws a lot of crowd. Uh, so uh, some very popular Esteban based fighters and uh, that, that other half of the 50-50 tonight going uh, towards Esteban MMA and, uh, and helping progress the sport and helping to grow the sport here in Esteban, uh, which again is becoming a very solid base for us here in the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship. In fact, it has Papano, a very well-rounded fighter, uh, a guy that's able to go to everywhere in the cage, and, and has proven that in his three fights so far, and uh, we'll see if he can continue that success here in the cage tonight as he gets set to fight in a very game Ryan Torrance, who's been looking to get back to 500. Because as, as much as we say that amateur records don't count, uh, you never want to be on the losing end of an amateur record. So uh, we know that Ryan Torrance will be coming out. And now, 
the official High Knot Fighters introductions. First, fighting out of the Pollen Gods Blue Corner, he has a record of one win and two losses and weighed in at 132 pounds. Fighting out of the Lodge Guanto Club, please welcome High Knot Fighter Ryan the Natural In the Boston Pizza Red Corner. With a record of two wins and one loss, he weighed in at 136 pounds. Fighting out of Blood Inc. by Team and the Brandon Boxing Club. From Escaban, please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Dennis Papado! <laughs> the referee in charge of the Hard Knocks action is Elvis. Lion. Fight, are you ready? Fight, are you ready? The blue corner, a big kick there from Papineau early, and Torrance is covering up. Papineau looking for the choke here. Maybe might have been better off going with strikes in the early going there, Jim. Well, it's, it all depends on what you think you can get. And uh, a big shot by uh, Dennis Papineau, and uh, it, it, it rings the bell of Ryan Torrance, but good for him that he was able to recover quickly. And uh, you look at Papineau on top, uh, looking to advance his position. He does have a uh, high mount here, looking to rain down some bombs, and turning his back is Ryan Torrance, and trying to slip in that rear naked choke is Dennis Papineau, and we don't know how tight it's in. They've got their backs to us right now. Uh, doesn't look like that elbow's underneath that chin and yet. There is a tap. tap. That fight is over just that quickly as Dennis Papineau comes out and gets a victory to go to three and one. Ryan Torrance will drop to the opposite one and three, but a very impressive performance in and it's swarming. His opponent was Dennis Papineau. We have the official decision brought to you by Les Lee Consulting. The winner by Tampa by a side choke at 49 seconds of the very first round. The winner out of the red corner, Teddy Papano! Find out more about Hard Knocks Fighting and upcoming Hard Knocks events. Please visit hardknocksfighting.com. This school of Hard Knocks Fly is in the 195 pound weight division and is brought to you by D&D Oil Field Services, Hard Knocks official cage movers. And now, let's meet the fighters. Death Valley making his way down to the cage. An independent fighter out of Thunder Bay, Ontario. We saw him fight at uh, the Regina card. And let me tell you, Jeremy, the most bizarre facial expression, no matter how many times he got kicked in the leg, no matter how many times he got punched in the face, the expression never, ever changed. It was exactly what you see on his face now, and that will be the expression on his face throughout the entirety of this fight, no matter what happens. It was eerie to watch. I refer to him as the Terminator, um, because no matter what happened to him, he just kept coming and the face, never changed. Well, and some people, uh, you get to that point in training where you don't want to show weakness, you don't want to show that uh, your poker face, uh, for example. And uh, Lloyd Death Valley definitely has that. And uh, again, a one on one exam for coming out of Thunder Bay, Ontario. And uh, a bit of a physical specimen. And uh, actually, a pretty humble guy when you talk to him. Yeah, I mean, I, again, it's so bizarre to talk to him. I mean, 
mean, I, I, I spoke to him about the face and, and about the reason why he, he's decided to do that. And uh, primarily, it's just, it, it is an intimidation factor. That no matter how hard you hit me, I'm not going to notice. Comes in, has, has a nice little talk with Doug Denance at the center of the cage uh, before heading back. But again, that's probably the most emotion you're going to see out of Lloyd Bell. He does look like an Arnold. Stuck up. It's a Derek Parker. Now, Derek Parker coming down to the cage tonight, and you will notice uh, a little, uh, a bit of a, a, a tribute to anti-bullying. Derek Parker, very uh, avidly involved, actively involved in the anti-bullying campaign. Uh, and so as a result tonight, and uh, I believe going forward, he will be coming down to the cage wearing pink shorts, and he will fight in pink shorts because pink, uh, not only the color of breast cancer awareness, uh, also the color of the anti-bullying campaign. And Derek Parker uh, wants uh, wants to know that wants you to know that uh, it, it's not uh, it's not just being a hero uh, by stop uh, stopping bullying. You can also be a hero by stopping bullying yourself. Uh, and that's the message that Derek's taken to schools and uh, and wants to be very uh, very involved in the Red Cross Imagine No Bullies campaign. And so as a result, of the pink shorts. Derek Parker. And of course, something that's near and dear to our hearts is we as children being uh, redheads. It just happens. It's cool. Uh, but you look at Derek Parker, a uh, fantastic fight the last time he fought against Felix Menes, and uh, he dominated Felix from cover to cover to pulse. And uh, a couple times he was striking him in the head and looking up at the referee going, what, what? I, I don't want to hit him anymore. Can you stop this fight? And then punched him again and then waited for the referee to not, eventually stop it. Not only that, Jeremy, but took the time to pick up Felix's mouthpiece, which he had knocked out of his mouth, put it back in, made sure it was OK, and then continued punching him in the face. A very sportsmanlike performance. The official Hard Fighter introduction. First, out of the power guard's blue corner, with a record of one and one, he weighed in at 184 and one half pounds, fighting independently from Thunder Bay, Ontario. Please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Lloyd Death Valley! And his opponent in the Boston Pizza Red Corner, with a record of four wins and three losses, he weighed in at 192 and one half pounds. Fighting out of Wiley Jiu Jitsu Academy from Regina. And we're in pick in support of to be a hero, stop pulling in. Please welcome High Knox fighter, Derek Goliath Parker! The referee in charge of the High Knox action is Elvis Lyon. Elvis Lyon in charge of the card as Derek Parker in the pink shorts takes on Lloyd Valley, and we are just about underway. Looks like uh, a bit of a cleanup required in the corner of Parker, uh, probably left over from the previous fight, of course. Is there anything he doesn't do? He, <laughs> he helps people out, he, he checks the cage. He's just, he's a good all-around guy, and we talked to him after and before the fight. He is. Uh, he's a stellar, stellar guy. So red and white trunks for Lloyd Valley, and uh, they both exchange leg kicks. A very, uh, the, the four and three record of Parker really doesn't give you all of his experience. Once fought 72 times in a single hockey season uh, when he was playing uh, minor pro hockey, uh, 504 penalty minutes uh, in that season for Derek Parker. So uh, a very experienced pugilist. Uh, on the other side, Lloyd Valley one and one. Like I said, the last time we saw him, just kept coming forward, a dominant fight, and uh, and won that fight regardless. But it looks like he got tagged there. A big right hand coming from Derek Parker, and Parker now trying to cut the cage off. Yeah, and uh, doing an effective job with it. Nice leg uh, leg kick there, and one back from Lloyd Valley. 
Uh, Derek Parker, uh, he's not as technical as, as a fighter as you'd see, as you see those hands coming down on the leg kick, uh, something he can work on going forward, but uh, very explosive and very powerful. Uh, he has one punch knockout power, and uh, he uh, he's doing a, a good job and has landed one of those big punches already today. Parker, again, uh, wearing the pink shorts, the red trunks for Lloyd Valley. Switching stances momentarily, but then goes back. Again, just stalking forward. The expression doesn't change no matter what he does. Uh, you can tell uh, Lloyd Valley, obviously, uh, with a bit of a karate background, as you can tell, not only from his stance, but the way he throws his kicks, uh, and, and really uh, just has that kind of mentality uh, of waiting in the, the Machida counterpunch strategy, if you will. Yeah, and a good rush forward by uh, Derek Parker as he continues to rush. Big punches being thrown here, and now he's got him up against the cage. He's down on top. He's in a mount. Uh, holding onto those arms is Lloyd Valley, but uh, giving him a little sweet chin music there is uh, Derek Parker using all aspects of uh, his body to inflict some damage. Call that move the five o'clock shadow as he just grinds his chin into the face of Lloyd Valley, maybe trying to change the expression. And it seems to have changed a little bit and a little a little nod between the fighters as to what was coming up and Lloyd Valley and is there, out. And there's Derek. that one knock, one punch knockout power. And again, Derek Parker, the first thing he cares about is making sure that Lloyd Valley is okay and uh, showing some respect. Uh, Lloyd Valley must have come to. And you could tell Derek Parker knew he was out because he stopped throwing and looked at the referee to make sure that he was coming in. Lloyd Valley is unconscious right now. Well, and uh, I remember Dana White mentioning that one of his fighters uh, had landed an elbow that knocked him out, and he stopped and didn't hit him again until the referee came to stop it a couple seconds later. And Derek Parker following along the same route here. Uh, he knew that he had the knockout. Uh, no need to uh, cause extra damage. This is a martial art and uh, not a bloodbath. And uh, good show of respect here for both these athletes. And uh, Derek Parker is going to uh, push his record a little bit more now. Five and three as an amateur. And uh, he's doing a fantastic job uh, as uh, he goes through. Now he's, you know, from what we've talked to him before, he's looking to uh, push himself uh, to a pro now that he's worked out a few of the kinks in his game and uh, an impressive performance uh, uh, to head into the pro ranks. And now, the official decision brought to you by the Oil Field Services. The winner by knockout at 2 minutes 25 seconds of the first round. Out of the red corner, Derek Clyde more about Hard Knocks Fighting and upcoming Hard Knocks events, please visit hardknocksfighting.com. This Super Hard Knocks fight is in the heavyweight division and is brought to you by Enzyme Energy Services, meeting all the challenging demands of the crude oil and natural gas industry. And now, let's meet the fighters! So Stephen Ahrens comes down to the cage, a heavyweight fighter out of Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, the first of three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back heavyweight fights to finish off the card here in Estevan. Stephen Ahrens, a seven-year Army Reserve, a uh, bit of a Saskatchewan sports hero as he played for the Regina Rams on their defensive line, but considers himself more of a striker than, uh, than a stand and shover. Well, if anybody's ever played uh, high-level football, uh, let me tell you, being on the line, offensive and defensive, there's a ton of striking going on. Uh, uh, good friends uh, with uh, Randy Chevrier, and he mentions that when he's on the line, uh, he may deliver several chops uh, to the neck and throat, 
and uh, arms of those uh, defensive linemen coming in uh, and offensive linemen as he's trying to get past. So uh, I can understand why Stephen Arms might be a striker. And of course, Chevrier only says that uh, unless you're a referee who's listening from the CFL, at which point that he's never clean. happens. He's clean. And his, are, his hands are cleanly on the chest of the defensive player who's coming in, and he's not got a hold of him at all. But Stephen Arons will always be looking to get his hands on Wade Baldwin as he comes into the cage. Of course, uh, Wade from Esteban, so he'll get his hometown pop, and, uh, and Arons uh, in for his first mixed martial arts fight of his career. Wade Baldwin. So Wade Baldwin comes in, and you can hear the fans already starting to cheer the hometown hero. Not at all worried about his chin. Of course, the last time we were here in Esteban, uh, it was, I believe, a 13-second knockout for Devin Smith, who you will see later in the card tonight, as he stepped up and absolutely drilled Baldwin and put him to sleep right on the off button. But uh, Baldwin says that that off button's taken a bit of a beating since and uh, he doesn't feel like his chin's going to be an issue. Well, nothing uh, says motivation than seeing the KO, uh, the knockout every day on a loop on the billboard. So uh, there's a loop that goes through to show the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship, and the loop shows Wade Baldwin taking one right on the chin and being out, and of course then getting stepped on by the referee. And of course that fight, that billboard, he said right on his drive to work, and at the time he drives by every single day, it's that knockout punch being highlighted on that billboard and, and playing. And so every day he needed to do that. Now, he said he didn't follow his game plan in the last fight. Not a lot of time to follow his game plan. So it'll be interesting to see what he's able to do here. Yeah, and uh, Wade Baldwin, a, a very physical guy, um, uh, able to use uh, his experience as an advantage, having been in the cage once, even though it was a short time, that's one more time than Stephen Arns. And being in the cage, even for a short time, is going to give you a bit of advantage because you know what it's like. You uh, know how to deal with the nerves. You know how to deal with uh, waiting because Wade Baldwin was the uh, second last fight in uh, the last Estevan card. So he has to know what it's like to wait uh, to, for his turn, and it's going to, uh, he thinks it's gonna be a big advantage. Well, not just that, he said the first time he came out for the last fight, very, uh, very surprised by the, the sheer volume of the, the hometown crowd, and it kind of, it, it put him off a little bit and, and messed with him a little bit, wanted to come out a little stronger, and he threw that big punch, left himself open for the counter punch, found himself face down on the mat. Of course, you can see uh, Derek Deku in the corner of Wade Baldwin. He'll be in our main event later tonight. Uh, but uh, these two obviously very close as uh, pillars of the S man. The official Hard Knock Fighter introductions. From the Power Dodge Blue Corner, got the Patente View and weighing in at 261 pounds. Fighting independently from Moose Jaw. Please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Stephen Aaron! <laughs> and in the Boston Pizza Red Corner, with a record of 0-1, he weighed in at 243 and one half pounds. <laughs> Fighting out of Southeast Combat Sports from Estevan. Please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, So Elvis Lyon in charge of the action. The doors are closed, the fighters are ready, and we are underway as Stephen Baldwin comes out to take, or, or Wade Baldwin rather, comes out to take on Stephen Aarons. Aarons in the black and red trunks, white trunks for Baldwin. Both fighters getting up in that D-line experience coming into early play here for Aarons. Uh, uh, not often you can throw a knee in that kind of scenario and not walk away with a penalty. And a big shot there by Wade Baldwin, but Aaron's getting right back up. A multiple big shots here landing, and 
Uh, I say big shots because they're heavyweights. Every single one of their shots is big. Well, either one of these fighters weighs more than some of our combined fighters in earlier fights tonight. And, uh, and both of these guys looking to uh, finish this one out. Uh, taking him down with the uh, guillotine choke attempt. Here's Wade Baldwin trying to finish this one early like he got finished a couple months ago. Well, what he needs to do here is he's just trying to use his arms. He's got to hip in, so he's got to step in in that situation. I don't, again, you've heard me say it multiple times, I don't like going down, but you can step in and hip in to be able to put the, uh, the, the damage down there. Aaron's now with Baldwin up against the cage. Aaron's looking to pop out. And he does now. Pushing him up against him. At the heavyweight division, this does wear people out. Just leaning on them, having all your body weight on somebody. It's here, you carry me for a while. I don't want to do it anymore. Well, and Aaron's came in at 255 pounds. So you can imagine the, uh, like you said, the weight that that puts on Baldwin. But Baldwin comes out swinging. Both fighters uh, really trying to to throw and Baldwin trying to throw everything he has at Aaron's. Aaron's just turning around, stumbling, but manages to land a couple punches of his own. No questioning the chin of Steven Aaron's here in round number one. Yeah, big shots again landed, and uh, Baldwin's really not turning his hips. These are just arm shots. As he, if he were able to turn his hips and uh, be able to uh, really get into each one of these punches, use his legs as uh, extra power. But again, great chin from Steven Aarons. And a big uppercut from Aarons there up against the fence. Again, uh, must bring back memories for Aarons as two big guys just going at it. And uh, this time now up against the cage, Baldwin grabs out one of Aarons' legs and now lays a knee into the chest and has him down. Baldwin now, or Aarons looked like he was trying maybe for the double leg but Baldwin able to push him back up against the cage. And again, his landing strikes to the side of the head, which can't do anything but look good in the eyes of the judges. Yeah, any one of these strikes is gonna look good for the judges. And uh, this uh, round decidedly to Wade Baldwin, uh, I think that, uh, and some foot stomp action going on there, and those always hurt. The foot stomp ends the round for Aaron's, but it was Baldwin carrying the bulk of the strikes in round number one had Aaron's turned around a couple times and uh, Baldwin looking a little confused in his corner saying I hit him with everything coach what do I do now well sometimes you just got to hit him a little harder and uh, that's the case and again I mentioned that he's not really using his hips and uh, he's mostly just swinging his arms uh, you're gonna see that uh, uh, a little bit when you look at a, a classic boxer, a boxer uses all of his legs and his hips to be able to turn in and do all that damage. And Wade Bolden uh, just swinging with his arms. So something for him to work on uh, as he goes forward. Uh, but a great round for him. Uh, you can't, uh, can't deny the fact that he was landing significant shots and uh, doing a, a good job of being the aggressor in the first round. And here's the example of what I'm talking about. No hip turn here, this is all arms that uh, is coming forward. And if you want to really be the one to uh, have that one punch knockout power, you have to turn those hips. As we get set for round number two, starts much the same as round number one. As Baldwin charges forward, they get up against the fence and they both start throwing bombs. Aaron's has Baldwin in a little bit of trouble here in the early going up against the fence, but now Baldwin manages to bull rush his way back out into the center of the cage and push Aaron's up against the fence and a big uppercut there as Aaron's ate the fist of Baldwin on that one. You could see his head snap back. This is almost looking like a Rocky fight as they continue to come forward. No real covering up, just off the chin, off the chin, off the chin. And there's some huge shots and just some pawing at one another, but each time one of those paws lands on the face, you can tell it hurts. Well, again, you can watch their heads reel with the impact of these punches as both fighters giving it their all here. And now it's those meat hooks just digging into the side of the body of, of Wade Baldwin as he keeps going forward. And, and Steven Aaron's just, I mean, it doesn't look like he should be on his feet. 
He keeps staggering step after step after step, but he is still going. Elvis Lyons right on top of the action. We have seen some very impressive knockouts tonight, and Elvis Lyons been right on top of them, and he's right on top of them here, but Stephen Aaron taking everything Baldwin has to give and just continuing to move forward. Yeah, these are some big shots here, and Elvis right in there, but uh, still nothing. And both these guys, a huge right hand. Both these guys are just throwing. This is, uh, this is, yes, it's a mixed martial arts fight. I would like to classify this as a barroom brawl where everybody, the two guys have had too many to drink, and this is what they're doing now. Well, you can see both of them now collapsing to the floor. Baldwin staggering away from that last exchange. Aaron's now trying to get something done, but just laying on Baldwin to catch his breath, driving a knee into Baldwin's ribs for good measure, which can't be helping Baldwin, who's also trying to catch his breath at this point, as those knees will start to take a toll. We have seen MMA fighters uh, uh, just uh, effectively submitted from knees to the side. Uh, uh, George St. Pierre winning his fight against Matt Serra in that fashion. But uh, at this point, Aaron and Baldwin now just exhausted as we reach the end of round number two. It looks like they're gonna get stood up. If they can stand up, both of these fighters have given it their everything in the first couple minutes. And I think Aaron thinks the round is over. Elvis Lyon directing him to the corner. Baldwin just resting against the fence. <laughs> I think Aaron both of them think the round is forward. over. Aaron now starting to move forward. Baldwin still up against the fence. Now he comes off and he eats a right hand as a result. And I think that is now the end of round number two. Some confusion here, maybe. And so, some highlights here of the replay of these guys just swinging at each other with everything they have. And we have a whole other round to go. So for the second time tonight, we're gonna get to a third round, assuming that both these fighters can answer the bell because they are exhausted. I mean, uh, look at the punches they're throwing. They're not crisp. They're not uh, in, in any way, shape, or form what their coaches want to be seeing, but they are still standing and they are still throwing, and the crowd is loving. Well, what's not to love about two guys just swinging at each other? Uh, throw technique out the window. This one is just going to be the will of whoever can push forward. Now, we know the first round goes to Baldwin. Uh, the second round has bits of pieces for either fighter. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how this comes. But there's the big right hand for me that changed the round. At that point, Baldwin was really dominating the round, and Aarons came out right at the end of that replay there with a huge right hand, and they touch gloves with a smile at center, and they go back to throwing wildly. Another big right hand from Aarons. He's starting to land the better of the strikes here in the late going of this fight. Well, and nobody can question Baldwin's chin now. as these two fighters now go to the ground and are looking to continue uh, to fight here in round number three. Again, Elvis Lyon right on top of the action here as both fighters looking to finish. Aaron now climbing on top and we'll see if he can make work of Wade Baldwin here now that he's got a mount. I don't know how much power he's gonna have behind his punches though, Jeremy. Gravity. Gravity and 250 pounds is, is what the amount of power. And each one of these punches has the ability to be able to land significant damage. And uh, not really posturing up is Steven Aarons. And uh, this is something that if, uh, if he comes out on the wrong end of this decision, he wants to look back. And just even posturing up and coming down with gravity would be enough to do a lot extra damage. Aaron's now on top of Baldwin, holding him down with the elbow, trying to get a punch through, and that one seemed to land. A couple now landing to the body, maybe trying to go body, body, head, but a lot of time in between those punches as, uh, again, 
Uh, Elvis Lyon checking on uh, Wade Baldwin to see if he's all right, to see if he can continue, and that is it. The fight is over. Wade Baldwin unable to answer and unable to defend. He'll fall to 0-2. Steven Aarons will be your winner. We have the official decision brought to you by Inside Energy Services. The winner by TKO, a referee stoppage due to strikes in two minutes and two seconds of the third round. In the new corner, Steve Aarons! Fighting and upcoming Hard Knocks events, please visit hardknocksfighting.com. And now for the official Hard Knocks Fighter introductions. In the first on site restoration blue corner, he's three and one as an amateur and weighed in at 185 and one half pounds. Fighting out of LA Warriors from LaRange, Saskatchewan, please welcome Hard Knocks Fighter. Barrett to Cool Thompson! And in the Ralph's Texas Bar and Steakhouse Red Corner, he's two and one as an amateur and weighed in at 186 pounds. Fighting out of Underground Training Center from Medicine Hat, please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Mike Gear! This belt will be contested under amateur rules. The referee in charge of the Hard Knocks action is Mr. Mark Aparicio. Fighters to center. Okay guys, you both know the rules. I want you to fight fair and fight hard. Obey my commands at all times. If you want to touch them up, do it now. Back to your class. Gear in the black trunks out of the red corner, white trunks out of the blue corner for Barrett Thompson as these two 185 pounders get set to go. A three inch height advantage for Barrett Thompson. Mike Gear, the much larger upper body build on the smaller fighter as he looks to get in and a big kick early from Barrett Thompson. Yeah, showing off that well-rounded game that uh, Barrett Thompson has. Great check of a kick there uh, by Barrett Thompson and then another nice kick. Very good leg work early. Gear coming forward. It's interesting in talking to Barrett Thompson, never been knocked out and he said he's been hit with a variety of things in his life and have been in several car wrecks and everything else. Says he's never been knocked out once, doesn't expect to be knocked out again here tonight and almost leading with that chin out front. 
Yeah, when you're tough and you're invincible, uh, you look at a guy like Chuck Liddell, who never, ever, ever got knocked out. And when it happens the first time, it does change you. But until then, you have what's called a, a, a granite chin. Uh, Rampage Jackson, another guy with a granite chin. So uh, Barrett Thompson in good company there if he's uh, not afraid to get knocked out by a big shot. Gear finds himself now with the back of Thompson. Trying to work it into a more dominant position, landing strikes from the side, hearing it from the crowd, and trying to throw Thompson to the ground and does. Powering through is Mike Gear, a big shot to the body there, and that couldn't have felt good. Yeah, and a knee right to the jaw as well. Yeah, and that again, amateur rules, no knees to the head of an opponent. Did catch him in the jaw, he will get time to recover. Mike Gear will have to head to the neutral corner. And it looks like he may see a point deducted here. We'll see if the official ends up going to the judges. And he is bringing the fighters back to center. No point deducted from Mike Gear there, but he did receive a warning. Throwing the big knee and Barrett Thompson recovering, trying to throw the back kick to Mike Gear, but Gear not getting in that range. Knocks down Thompson with a big right hand, and he's continuing to throw punches, but Barrett Thompson eager to the task as he comes forward with a knee of his own. Both fighters landing big punches here and trading and smiling as they head back towards one another. And they are feeding off of this crowd here in Medicine Hat. Mike Gear, the hometown boy, but I, I can imagine that a few of those cheers might be for Barrett Thompson because he took three huge monster bombs and he kept on coming. And they're going right back to the game, throwing leg kicks. Said he'd never been knocked out, proving he can take a punch or two there as he, ha he ate everything Mike Gear could feed him and just kept coming forward. Yeah, you look at uh, Barrett Thompson, very tough, and he landed a few shots of his own. Like, it was a, it was a fair exchange at one point. Uh, Mike Gear getting a bit of a better of it at the end, but Barrett Thompson uh, checking in and using those legs to his advantage. Thompson lands a nice right hand as Gear gets away from the exchange. Gear Thompson working the kicks more effectively than Gear to this point, but when Gear gets inside, he's landing the bigger of the two strikes. Yeah, well, Gear's a big guy, so you can imagine that this is down. There's two more huge shots, and Barrett Thompson is hanging in there. He looks like no worse for wear, like you can't hurt me. And Thompson trying the front kick, spinning over, big fist just shortly after the bell. Not intended was a follow through on the kick. Kicked over the head, came in with the spinning back fist. Uh, a bit of a reaction from the crowd. It happened, uh, I'm gonna say a half second late, but They're ready rushing. for round number two between Mike Gear in the black trunks out of the red corner. And uh, Barrett Thompson in the white trunks out of the blue corner. Championship action here at the School of Hard Knocks 20, presented by the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship. Yeah, every round as entertaining as that one will be in for a great fight. Again, going forward, driving forward, landing punches is Mike Gear. Gamely coming right back at him though. Barrett Thompson trying a throw, unable to do so, and tries to get him over to the cage. Again, a, a green belt in judo is Barrett Thompson. Mike Ge Gear secures the takedown, but Thompson ends up on top. Yeah, immediately switching, a little bit of a tug on the shorts there. Uh, but there's certain points where a guy who's had a wrestling background, a judo background like Barrett Thompson, where you know you're about to get taken down. So what are you gonna do when you land? And that's what Barrett Thompson did. He knew he was about to get taken down by Mike Gear. so as soon as he was landing, he was already countering on the way down. Uh, excellent, uh, excellent technique there by Barrett Thompson. Gear trying to come over the top with right hands. Barrett Thompson answering them with stiff jabs. Both of these fighters landing punches and keep coming forward. You gotta love this kind of action here in a championship fight. Now, obviously not Foreman Ali, but you can see maybe the strategy of Barrett Thompson. He's taking some big shots, but those hands are now dropping on Mike Gear. This is a five round fight. There is so much time left in this fight. And if Barrett Thompson can go that whole way, Mike Gear is already sucking wind. Gear is starting to breathe a little harder as he works towards it. Hard Knocks fans will have seen him fight in a fight before that got into the late rounds, the referee breaking them up to allow Barrett Thompson's mouthpiece to go back in. And it uh, looks like they're just gonna give it a bit of a wash before they put it back in his mouth. You never know what's on the, on the, the map, but you can hear everybody around us uh, in the crowd saying, breathe, Mike, breathe. 
and uh, trying to get some wind back into Mike Gear. Again, a big guy, and it takes a lot of uh, it takes a lot of oxygen and uh, to run those muscles. A thousand coaches in the crowd for Mike Gear, advising him to breathe. Barrett Thompson gets his mouthpiece all rinsed up and comes out firing with a right hand. Gear pacing back forward again. Thompson very confident in his chin, maybe content to take these punches if he thinks he can tire Gear out. Yeah, and but you look at uh, there's. Not the tiring out is not uh, not Mike Gear's only uh, thing going on. Barrett Thompson is also tiring out. Those kicks that used to be super fast are now coming in quite slow. These punches are all loopy. This one is going to be uh, a very interesting finish. Well, and we've seen Mike Gear in one of these wars before, where it took him to the end of the third round, and he was wobbled. And speaking of wobbled, here's Mike Gear chasing down Barrett Thompson who seems to have been a little bit taken by one of the punches from Gear as Gear now works the takedown and has Thompson up against the cage. With 20 seconds to go, this is a great thing for Mike Gear because he's getting an opportunity. He's going to get an extra 20 seconds of rest here as he's not going to push this action. He's just going to try and use this 20 seconds to win the round. And that's a nice way to put an emphasis in the judges' minds. Gear in the black trunks, Thompson in the white trunks as we get set for round number three in our championship main event. Touching gloves at center, they both get set again in what has been a very entertaining exchange of punches from both fighters. This one, although there are some elements of MMA in here, it looks more like a, a very, very trained street fight at this point because these guys are just pounding one another. Ah, and that was a very stiff right hand and answered back by Gear after Thompson landed the big one. And it looks like, oh, it looks like a low blow landed. Uh, Mike Gear certainly wincing like it was. And we've got a quick timeout here as Mike Gear will get a moment to recover. So both fighters suffering an illegal blow in this fight and getting a chance to recover. Of course, that also gives Barrett Thompson time to recover as well. Uh, uh, something that we saw in the first round with Mike Gear getting to recover after the need of the jaw. That's right. Well, it looks like they're right back at it. I figured he'd take a bit more time to rest so that we could, you know, have a more entertaining fight. They get a fresh rest for themselves, well, he, but he back was, at it. He was allowed five minutes, took about one of those before getting back at it. And both these fighters starting to look exhausted as they've put everything into their opponent's chins to this point, except for a knockout blow. And we are at round three. I'm waiting for round four and five. They're going to start swinging like Rocky and Apollo Creed at that point. Tried the big left hand, did Barrett Thompson. The stiff jab missed. And a big right swings up and catches. Two big rights swinging up and catching Thompson. And he is not backing down as he keeps coming forward. I, I mean, he told me he couldn't be knocked out. I'm starting to believe it as he is eating huge punches from Mike Gear and just keeps coming forward. He's also delivering some big shots. He's countering these shots with some straight rights and straight lefts that aren't the big loopers, and they don't make uh, Mike Gear uh, move back at all. But that head snaps back, and you can see the damage on Mike Gear's face. And there's another quick shot that landed very accurately on Mike Gear's face. No, starting to build over Gear's left eye. Thompson landing that jab effectively there a couple times, and the blood now a li uh, coming from the forehead of Mike Gear. And uh, as we well know in MMA, when an opponent's face starts to bleed, that becomes the target. That's the place you want to hit him further to make it worse for him and make it harder for him to see. Nice snap there. This is a big shot. Referee's going to watch, but it looks like a good intelligent defending by Barrett Thompson. Good snap on the leg kick on the way down. Barrett Thompson coming back up. And I'm just sitting here, and these guys, this is an entertaining fight. <laughs> Lands a big hand as Barrett Thompson on the way out, getting a hand from the crowd. Mike Gear standing with his hands in his proverbial belt loops, wondering what he's going to have to do to put Barrett Thompson down for good. We saw it with Todd Thompson here in Medicine Hat a few months ago. I thought he'd been knocked out on three separate occasions, and every single time he got right back up. Barrett Thompson proving the older brother's chin is just as tough. Yeah, we're down to our about 10 seconds left in the round now. And these two guys are getting psyched for the next round, it looks. And again, 
Some nice punches being led. I'm thinking that all these rounds have gone to Mike Gear so far, just because he's getting the bigger of the strikes. But five rounds in the championship fight, and wow, are these guys putting on a show. Well, these guys are just throwing bombs at each other and will not go down. This is a fight. So again, championship rounds here, round number four, three minute rounds for the amateurs. And again, no knees or uh, no knees or elbows to the head of an opponent, as well as no twisting leg locks. Although if this one goes to the ground, you can count me surprised. Yeah, or it might go to the ground. Mike Gear has been successful on two takedowns. And Baron Thompson just gets up. He well, yeah, it, it hasn't <laughs> stayed on the ground very long, I guess is what I mean. Yeah. Enough time to secure a twisting leg lock. Yeah, of course. Well, it, you know, <laughs> what's more to say? I think we should just shut up and let them fight. <laughs> Stiff kick there from McGear as Thompson comes forward, lands some punches. That conditioning may come into a factor. Both of them throwing big strikes, a knee coming dangerously close to Barrett Thompson's face for the second time, and that could have cost Mike Gear as he's already had one. He's got to be careful he doesn't have another, or he may see a point deducted, which could be very valuable as this fight comes to a close. And after each exchange that these guys have, they look at each other and give each other a, a nod. Good job, good job. We, we like this. And as, as commentators here, it's, it's enjoyable to watch a fight like this because both of these guys have no quit in them absolutely. Uh, phenomenal uh, tenacity, I, I guess is the best way to put it, is both these guys continue to fight. Softer kicks coming from both as they both land a stiff jab that sends their opponent heading backwards. Yeah, if uh, we had uh, one fighter come up to us and say, fight of the night, I think, I think he might have lost at this point now. Uh, hey, Depending on how this one finishes, you may be right. I don't as think both these went. guys continue to throw punches, continue to throw kicks. And uh, again, I, I mean, if you're Barrett Thompson's corner, you got to be telling him he's got to finish this fight, though, because he may be down three rounds at this point, uh, despite having thrown some significant blows. Uh, you know, again, from an outsider's perspective, a big eyes and an ooh coming from Barrett Thompson after that punch. But again, I mean, he's eating huge right hands from an enormous man, and he is not flinching. Well, that he's one, continuing to go forward. That one hit him in the neck, and I think that that was the big thing, is you just punched me in the neck. I'm coming back. And so uh, Mike Gear's response is, I'm just going to punch you really hard. Barrett Thompson just looked with rage at Mike Gear, saying, give me what you got. My chin can take it. And that has been accurate thus far. Now blood on the face of Barrett Thompson. Blood pouring from the mouth of Mike Gear. These two guys have everything and uh, to go here, and they continue to fight with just five seconds now remaining in round number four. We're going to go to a fifth and final round, and you couldn't ask for much more from your main event. Wow. Barrett Thompson is in home run territory, in my opinion. You're going to look, he's going to throw. He doesn't appear to be ability to be knocked out, and Mike Gear is trying to hold on, and these guys are just amazing fighters at this point. Well, the crowd just chanting, Mike, Mike, Mike. Again, the hometown boy getting the love from the crowd, and Barrett Thompson getting the first right hand, or first left hand, rather, of the fifth round. Landed another stiff jab, but he may have to finish this fight if he wants to win those first three rounds. Despite his heavy blows of his own, he probably was on the wrong end of the judges' scorecards. We talk about Bear Thompson's chin. It's time to talk about Mike Gear's chin. He's taking some huge shots, and he's asking him, come on, come on, fight me. This It just reminds me, again, of those Rocky movies at this point, because what else is there to go? These guys, uh, both of them should have been knocked out about six times by now, if, if not more. Yeah, both these guys displaying an absolute will to win as they continue fighting. Mike Gear moving forward. Barrett Thompson counter-punching like the best of them as he continues to land punches. That one a hammer fist to the back of Mike Gear's ear. A big right hand and a spinning back fist in response. And just now a slapping back hand. Didn't bother spinning with that back hand. Just threw it at Gear. That one caught Thompson. He may have a granite chin. The ribs may be a different story as he took that one to the body and went off running. Yeah, these two guys 
you look at this crowd, if you talk about why MMA is so popular, you're looking at it right here. These two guys are just throwing at one another and showing charisma at the same time and showing that the, all the exchanges between the two of them, the subtle exchanges, are what's making this fight that much more spectacular. Both guys coming at it, one minute, 10 seconds remaining here in this main event of the evening. Title on the line, 185 pound amateur will go to one of these two men in less than a minute as they head towards the final, uh, the final seconds of our fifth and final round. Barrett Thompson coming forward and eating a right hand for his, for his trouble as he keeps dancing around now and Mike Gear cuts him off. Yeah, these two guys are going at it. Now throwing kicks, but I think Barrett Thompson, he's down. I think he might just be tired. He continues to go back up again. Wow, Barrett Thompson slipped on the sweat and who's to blame him? There's a ton of it there. These guys are just trading. 24 seconds remain now. Mike Gear looked confused when Barrett Thompson got up. He thought he might have done it but confused and frustrated nevertheless. He has won this fight, or he may win this fight. The judges' scorecards, just 10 seconds to go in this fight as Mike Gear and Barrett Thompson, one of them, will be your 185 pound champion as these two continue to fight to the bell. What a finish for these two warriors as they go the full distance. What a fight. You cannot ask for more in your main event. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have the official decision brought to you by Essential Energy Services. The winner by unanimous, unanimous decision in the red corner, Mike Gear!